that specific. I greet you all this Sunday morning in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and blessed to be here and to worship with us this day. Uh, thankful also to the leadership of the church for inviting me today to worship with us and to break the bread, the table, and break the bread the word together with us and just to encourage us and tell us that every time we show up in the presence of God something godly will always happen in your life and because this is a house that is called by the name of the Lord from the time that we began to praise to the time of prayer and now to a time of hearing God's word proclaimed just know that something godly is actually happening in your life, in your circumstances. Let us pray. Loving God, we praise your name. You who is the word. And as we have a time of listening to your word proclaimed, May your Holy Spirit minister to each one of us because you know our stories. You know where we are at. Speak to us, O oh God, in the language, O oh God, that speaks to our circumstances in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds. I don't know what you hear in that verse. Let me read it again. Consider it pure joy. Consider it pure joy. Not just joy, but pure joy. My sisters and my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Pure joy, trials of many kinds. I went to your YouTube page this last week just to see what the minister last Sunday was sharing on so that I can be able to link with what we are sharing here today and the same theme that was there last Sunday uh, continues today about thanksgiving in difficult circumstances. And there was a wonderful young lady who was preaching last Sunday who reminded us three important things. To be patient in times of suffering, to persevere in times of suffering, and to position ourselves in God. And I remember hearing the song, We Have an Anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure when the billows roll. Position ourselves even in difficult circumstances in God. And today we continue with the same theme of thanksgiving, specifically our attitude on thanksgiving in situations of pain. Pure pain. How does pure pain become pure joy? There's a song that we sing often in painful circumstances that goes something like this. Father, along we will know all about it. Father, along we will understand why. Cheer up, my brother. Live in the sunshine, we'll understand it all by and by. Father along, we will know all about it. Father along, we will understand why. And then the hymn writer says, cheer up my brother, 
cheer up my sister, live in the sunshine. We'll understand it all by and by. And the hymn writer seems inspired by James. Consider it pure joy. Live in the sunshine, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds because we'll understand it by and by. Now James is calling us to a difficult thing. Giving thanks to God even in crisis. He's asking us to thank God who is the giver of wholeness. Yet we are presently sick. Thank God who is the author of love. Yet right now you are dealing with a broken heart. Thank God who rewards people with long lives. Yet right now some of us are in mourning. Mourning a parent, a spouse, a child, a friend, a beloved who has died. James is asking us to thank God. Thank God who is the protector, yet you feel right now dangerously exposed. Hard experiences provoke protest, not praise. On a normal day, hard experiences provoke complaining. Now even giants of faith protest some of the actions that God allows. Jesus himself at the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me, he asks. Moses also protests when God threatens to destroy the Israelites. Naomi protests and says, call me Mara because God has dealt bitterly with me. Even Job as we heard even the opening words in the service today, Job protests and says, I have a case to state before God. Now Job's wife tells the beloved husband, curse God and die. Now David protests and asks, for how long will you Allow my enemies to gloat over me. God, rise from your slumber. David protests. Martha and Mary tell Jesus, if only you had been here, our brother wouldn't have died. Habakkuk, as we were looking at last Sunday, at some point asks, when will you come to punish the enemies? When? Tell me. When will you come, Lord, to punish the enemies? When is thanksgiving valid? When does thanksgiving come out of us naturally? Now we know circumstances when a thank you comes naturally. When God has done you well. When a prayer you've offered has been answered. When a miracle has happened. We say you're a miracle working God. Because a miracle has happened. And thanksgiving comes naturally when the, uh, 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 the hand of God has moved in your favor. When good things happen, we are ready to rise, to raise up a song of praise. We raise up a shout to the Lord to celebrate the praise report naturally. As a human being, as a person living amongst people, now, if you give thanks in all things, huh? if you give thanks in all things, even painful things, even confusing things, people are bound to tell you things. They are bound to tell you that you're being unrealistic. They will tell you you're being too spiritual. Come back to earth. Or you have become obsessed with religion. Or even that you do not know what you are doing. You are confused. You are off season. And in some circumstances, they may be suspicious. Suspicious of you and think that you are rejoicing for the tragedy that has happened. They think that in the tragedy, there is something that you know that they do not. Something you need to 
disclose, something they may need to investigate because you are not acting normal. Now, James is removing us. James is removing us from the normal plane where thanksgiving is valid only for some things. James is moving us from a place of either or. And James is pointing us to a radical, and I say radical new place dominated by thankfulness. He is telling us that there is a place where God would rather you and me, we together, be. God would rather be, God would rather we be, God would rather you and me be on the thankful side of life. Now James is giving us a critical insight here that, a critical insight that when Christ is in control of your life, when Christ is in control of your life, everything, everything is thanksworthy. Now, in reality, definitely, a thank you in pain is one of the hardest things. Pain is such a strong emotion, such an overpowering emotion, Pain is such an overwhelming emotion that squeezing a thanksgiving out in a season of pain is a hard thing. When you are fired from a job, when you lose a dear one, when your marriage, when your relationship fails, when you fail an exam, when you are broke, when you lose a dear one. Now in such circumstances, in such circumstances, in all truthfulness, it is not a thank you that you express over a bowl of ice cream. No. It is not a thank you that is expressed with a dance to your favorite song. No. This is not a thank you that you arrive at immediately. Actually, it's a thank you that arrives after a long journey. A long journey of questions, a long journey of emotions. This is a thank you. A thank you that is brewed in pain. This is a thank you that comes less from contentment and more from subordination. This is a thank you that comes from a deep knowledge, a deep knowledge of who God is. You may not understand where you are at. You may not understand what's going on, but you have a deep knowledge of who God is, a knowledge that shifts us, a knowledge that shifts us, a knowledge that shifts us because we know that those circumstances shift God is not shifting. Shifts in circumstances do not mean a shifting God. It is a thank you that rises to God. Not because your terms have been met, but because thankfulness is the best place to be. And sometimes the circumstances are too painful that we see God as one who is stealing from us as one who is destroying us, as one who is killing us. Now it is critical for us to know and know well that God comes that you may have life and life in abundance. Now you could be in the same circumstance with another person. You as a believer would be in the same circumstance with another person, but the way you understand God, the way you know God, the way you have interacted with God, the way you have encountered God makes you interpret a circumstance in a very different way from the other person who you could be going through the same circumstance together. I'm talking about Joshua and Caleb. Now, while the majority saw disaster and death, 
Joshua and Caleb saw a beautiful land which God had granted them. I'm talking about Elisha, the prophet, and Gehaz, the servant. While well, Gehaz saw pain and death in the hands of a Syrian army that was surrounding them, Elisha was thankful that there were more on their side. He prayed to God for his servant Gehaz and said, Open his eyes that he may see the many on our side. Same circumstance, different interpretation. Paul has his eyes opened. And because of that, he is able to know that I, I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God who is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now Paul, in a circumstance of distress, but of him seeing only distress, he sees also how much the love of God is stuck with him. No circumstance has power enough, says Paul, to tear us away from the hold of God. And so he proceeds to say words that really encourage my spirit many a time. That we are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. There is affliction. True. But Paul sees how we shall not be crushed. Perplexed but not driven to despair. Persecuted but not forsaken. Struck down but not destroyed. This is because circumstances may come to destroy you. But God disempowers those circumstances. They come with the motive of scattering you. But God is present to put you together. God makes sure that the enemies of your life suffer critical frustration that scatters their agenda. The same way he stands and asks, Death, where is your sting? He stands over even the most painful circumstance and says, Know and hear. I am the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. I do not faint or grow weary. My understanding is unsearchable. I give power to the faint. And strengthen the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary. And the young will fall exhausted. But those whose wait is for me. Those who wait for me shall renew their strength. They shall mount with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Happenings may be too sophisticated. Too complex for us to make any sense out of them. But no circumstance, my sister, my brother, no circumstance is too complex for God. So consider it pure joy. My sisters, my brothers, when you face trials of many kinds, knowing God gives you and me new eyes. Hallelujah. Knowing God gives you and me new eyes. We are looking at a difficult circumstance, but the eyes with which we see this circumstance is or are new. God gives us a different mind. The way we understand a difficult circumstance, when we are in the Lord, when we have a deep knowledge of God, when you have a new mind, you will not see the same circumstance the same way as you did when you did not know God. Sisters and brothers, no one should be proud then of a shallow faith. A shallow faith is a neglected faith, a faith that has not moved from the level you received it at. We shall be worried, we should be worried that our prayer time is non-existent. We should be afraid when we can't remember the last time we talked about Jesus to someone. We should be concerned that our only Bible study is the Bible reading that was done in church. It is in prayer 
It is in sharing God's word with others. It is in reading God's word that we grow in our knowledge of God. And as you grow in your knowledge of God, so do your eyes become sharper. So does your mind become newer. Hallelujah. We should be concerned because it is these practices in which our knowledge of God grows and our eyes are opened. Our eyes become sharper. Our eyes become open to see all circumstances through the eyes of the victory of Christ. Just know that it is God's will for each one of us that we grow out of the place where we are stuck at complaining and go to a place where complaining is only a point. We hear this again. To move to a place where complaining is only a point on our journey to the more insightful level of thanksgiving. That we may be in a place where we do not use the pain God has allowed in our lives as a bargaining chip. But we be in a place where we understand that pain as one that should not be saved, but one that should be surrendered. Friends, friends, there is a thank you. A thank you to God that is offered without a dance. There is a thank you that is offered to God without a smile. There is a thank you that is offered to God in the midst of tears. There is a thank you that is offered with a heavy heart. There is a thank you that is brewed in pain. There is a thank you that we offer though our hearts are trembling in sorrow. But it is this thank you that begins to stabilize our heartbeats. We offer thanksgiving. We offer thanksgiving. We offer our thanksgiving in knowledge because by nature we know God will always work for us. Now for me as a person, every time I'm in a hard circumstance, the eyes that God has given me, the mind that God has given me, tells me, please look for abundant life here. It's a hard circumstance, but because I know that God comes and gives me full life in full, I ask myself, look for abundant life in this circumstance. And even if I can't see it, it's just a matter of time before I see God's abundance emerging even from the most difficult of circumstances. We offer thanksgiving in hope because we know that joy comes in the morning. We offer in obedience because the God of the valley is also the God of the mountain top. We offer this thanksgiving because even if it bears nothing, it is the will of God concerning us. Count it pure joy, even when you go through the most difficult of pains. It may not bear anything for now, but it's the will of God concerning us. This thanksgiving raised up from our hearts to God will not leave us the same. It is a confession that all our lives, even the places of pain, belong to God. It opens our lives to the unlimited God to deal with our confusing and painful limitations. It silences this thank you, silences the demons that would want to drag us into depression. It elevates us from a lowly place. It elevates us, this thanksgiving uh, elevates us from a lowly place and moves us away from the end of bitterness to a hopeful plane where there is healing and a new beginning. And, friends, if thanksgiving brings us value in times of pain, if thanksgiving is valuable in times of pain, how much more should we thank God when we are in gain? Hallelujah. 
how much more should we thank God when we are in gain? Pure joy in pain. Pure joy also in gain. The journeys may be different. The journeys may be different, but the praise still rises to a God who receives it and that sacrifice of thanksgiving coming from pain or coming from gain will not leave us the same. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And amen. I'm aware that next Sunday is a Thanksgiving Sunday here in this church. And maybe you're wondering from a place of pain, how can I give God thanks? Now come from your place of pain, come with a full thanksgiving to God. Come with a full worship of God. And also if you're in a place of gain also, come with a full worship to God. Come with a full praise to God. Come with a generous gift of worship to God, whether we are in gain or we are in pain. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Let us pray. We praise you, O oh God. Because you teach us, you elevate us, even our understanding of circumstances. And now, Father, I thank you for the gains that these, your daughters and sons, have experienced from your hand. And I pray, O oh God, that you shall give them a spirit of pure thanksgiving because of the gains they have received. Father Lord, I pray even for those who could be in pain and I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that from your word that has guided us this day that you will begin to shift them. You begin to give them new eyes to see the circumstance they are in as a circumstance that is still thanksworthy. Hallelujah. May your Holy Spirit help us to have new eyes, to have a new mind which makes us see all circumstances with the knowledge and understanding that you are in control. And you could be here this morning and you have heard about God many times. But today you're saying, I want to commit my life to this God who is God in pain and also God in my gain. You're saying, I don't want to live a life where I'm in church. I want to surrender my life to Jesus Christ. If you're here and you're saying, I want to surrender my life today to the Lord Jesus Christ. Just lift up your hand. We will see it. And we'll pray with you this Sunday. So that you will live with gain. The gain of salvation. You're here saying, I want to surrender my life to Jesus Christ today. With courage. With faith. Just lift up your hand to God. And we'll pray with you. Loving God, we thank you for your word. And may this word continue to minister to us as we go throughout the week, as we interact with other people, as we engage our circumstances. May this word bear much fruit for us. And even as we come next Sunday in thanksgiving to you, may we come with full hearts. May we come with full hearts knowing that our praise, our thanksgiving from gain and from pain 
is valid before you. In Christ Jesus, our Lord, we pray. And we all say, amen, amen, and amen. God bless all of us.